Active eukaryotic class 2 or DNA transposons share key features with the bacterial IS and TN elements, as well as complex transposons, including flanking inverted repeats and genes required for transposition, for example, the transposase gene. Like the bacterial elements, they also leave a pair of flanking direct repeats of host cell DNA at the insertion site. Note that the ends of eukaryotic transposons do not include any independent mobile elements analogous to the bacterial IS elements. So now let's look at a general description of the cut and paste mechanism of type 2 DNA transposon mobility. After transcription and translation of the transposase gene that's not shown in this illustration, the enzyme's endonuclease activity hydrolyzes the ends of transposons leaving staggered ends, somewhat like uh, bacterial restriction endonucleases that we so commonly use in recombinant DNA research. The transposon is thus liberated from its locus in the genome, you see that at the right of this illustration, and at the same time, the genomic DNA can come back together because of those complementary staggered ends. DNA polymerase next fills in the missing nucleotides, basically an example of DNA repair. DNA ligase then completes the repair of the genomic DNA. Transposase, in the meantime, binds the cut ends of the transposon, causing it to form a circular structure shown here. In this configuration, the transposase can attack or cleave target DNA and ligate one strand of the target DNA to one end of the transposon, at the same time trimming back the three prime end of the other target DNA strand. With the transposase still hanging on, the next step is ligation of one strand at the other end of the transposon to the target DNA, and a similar trim back of the three prime hydroxy end of the other target DNA strand. In the final steps, DNA polymerase fills in the missing bases, and DNA ligase completes the paste part of the transposition. Fill in of the bases at either end of the inserted element, complete creation of the direct repeats characteristic of transposition. Now let's look at a general description of the replication based mechanism of DNA transposon mobility. We start with our transposon ready to jump. Mobility begins with transposase catalyzed cleavage and hydrolytic trimming of host DNA at the transposon locus. But this time, the transposon is not excised from its resident site. Instead, the transposase indeed holds the transposon in a circular configuration, but with the genomic DNA still attached. In the next step, the transposase enables two free 3' free hydroxyl ends of the transposon to attack or hydrolyze the double-stranded target site and then ligate each cut end of the transposon strand to the different cut ends of the target DNA strands. The result of ligation leaves the original transposon in place as part of a structure called the cointegrate. In the cointegrate, the original and replicated transposons are aligned by folding of the genomic DNA. As a result of forming this cointegrate, you get an internal chromosome alignment of the two elements, and the DNA can undergo recombination by one of two mechanisms. And the result is resolution of the cointegrate and the duplication of short target site DNAs that are the footprints of transposition. So let's summarize. First let's look at the similarities and then the differences between cut and paste and replicative transposition. The common features are at the start of the transposition pathway. Transposase catalyzes single-stranded hydrolysis and trim pack to leave staggered overlapping ends. In cut and paste transposition, transposase catalyzes second strand cleavage to release the transposon from its resident DNA. The enzyme keeps the transposon ends together, effectively creating a circular structure. The enzyme, together with the free circularized transposon, catalyzes the cleavage of the target site DNA to begin insertion. The main thing here is that no cointegrate forms. Compare this to replicative transposition. The transposon is sort of circularized, but while it is still linked to and part of the resident site DNA, the transposase bound to this partially circularized structure catalyzes the invasion of target site DNA to begin insertion and the formation of a cointegrate. The cointegrate is a transient structure that must be resolved by one of two recombination mechanisms.